Hey guys, Cam here at the Butler Workshop and welcome. Um, well, the Vic Belay's refurbishment is just about finished. Um, had to go back and replace a couple of seals when we developed some oil leaks when we topped up the, uh, the boxes, the uh, feed shaft uh, box and the uh, apron with oil. And uh, it looks like someone's been there before me. That's one of the seals that have come out and it looks like someone's had a really good hot crack at that with a pin punch and toe that have formed it. Hence the reason it was leaking. So if you're fitting seals, make up a dolly to fit it properly. Um, one of the bells and whistles I did want to add onto this lathe was a, a DRO system, so uh, a two axis system, X and Z, and I purchased one or a Sino unit from AliExpress, and that came out just under $400 Australian delivered, so I was really happy with the price, and the prices have really come down since I fitted them to both my lathe and the milling machine to, uh, I'd say, almost half. So a uh, real value for money out there for these, uh, for these DRO systems. Um, with the DRO systems, you get um, a bag of stocking fill, as I call them. You get nuts, bolts, socket head, cap screws, grub screws, all different lengths. Nothing really fits up properly. The brackets you get, none of the whole centers line up with anything on the reed heads or the uh, glass scales in any way, shape or form. So you've got to make up all your own brackets to support the reed heads in place. The other thing they come with are corn covers. So uh, there's a shield that goes around them. Um, the Z-axis one that goes on the bed, that's fine. We can fit that up okay. But uh, it's totally oversized for what we need to do uh, on the saddle. So we're gonna make up a new cover for that to protect it from the, uh, from the swarf and from the coolant. So uh, we're gonna use a bit of uh, 30 by 30 um, square low section aluminium. So uh, we'll use that to, uh, to make that up and uh, try and afford that a little bit better protection than just having it sitting there on its own. All right, let's head on over the lathe and uh, let's see what we've got going. Well, that's the x-axis sort of sitting where it's roughly going to go. Um, we've got the reed head down here and we've got the glass scale up inside here. Uh, one of the issues I've got, as I mentioned with the cabling, is that um, this pinch point here when the tailstock comes up, it is going to pinch. There is no clearance or very little clearance between the outside of the saddle here or the inside of the saddle and the outside of the tailstock. So I need to put some sort of buffer on the front of the tailstock to protect that. As I mentioned, you do get some covers, but it's miles too big. Uh, even if I, I, I don't think I could really rework that to fit into that very tight spot as well. And I do have some, some constraints here that I need to work with on this. And one is the distance that I've got between the top of the, uh, the, the glass scales and the underside of the, um, of the top side. There's not a lot of room there to work. So uh, I'm going to be using a bit of um, 1.6, 30 to 30, um, square hollow section, aluminium section, and uh, the plan is that uh, I'm going to create a window or a cutout inside here that the DRO can fit down inside. Um, I'll keep the ends um, enclosed and I'm going to fit an angle over here as an enclosure as well. It'll give me a little bit of extra packing. One of the issues I do have is that the reed head here is hitting up against the, uh, the casting when I do push that in, so I do need to pack the whole unit out a little bit. So a couple of things to be aware of when we're doing this, but um, let's have a look at the little drawing I've just thrown together. As I said, all my little projects start with little drawings. I can dock them up very, very quick and they sort of iron out a lot of the bugs before you actually start, uh, start any fabrication. All right, this is the drawing I've, uh, I've quickly knocked up. So we're going to do this cutout in the bottom. We're going to keep the ends enclosed as much as we can. I'm going to wrap an angle, uh, an angle around this. Um, gives a bit of thickness at the back here to get that reed hit away from the casting, but also to enclose it off. And I'm going to use a bit of super glue for that. Uh, I think that'll be fine. It's going to be, once it's screwed in place, it's going to be held anyway, so it's not going to go anywhere. It's just to uh, keep it in place while we get it, uh, while we get it buttoned up. All right, let's, uh, let's get some things cut the length and let's make a start. Eh? So that cutouts worked out really well. Just got a little tiny bit to clean up just on the lip there. I'll just do that with a file. And uh, I might have to take out the radius just a little bit on the edges there. But other than that, it's, it's worked out really well. Just to add a bit of support, you might have noticed I do have some little um, buttons, just basically a quarter inch, uh, sorry, six mil bolt with a nut on it, just to support, give it some support when I clamp down. 
All right, let's get this out, get it cleaned up, and we'll see how it's gonna look. Okay, let's see what we've done. So that's our, our cutout completed. That's our scale fitting up in there quite neatly. And our scale. Well then fit in like so. So uh, yeah, really, really happy with that. That's come up with an absolute treat. All right, next job is to mark out the holes to mount the unit onto the saddle. So we'll get that sorted. I've got all my layouts that I've done uh, on the CAD so I know exactly where that's going to go to give me the maximum um, strokes that I need. All right, we'll get that set up and get that laid up and uh, set up pop them and get some holes drilled. All right, so I've got this uh, guard and the uh, or shield and the um, glass slide mounted into place. So all I've done is I've just drilled uh, a through hole um, right through the uh, through the shield here so that I could bolt that all the way through with a cap screw. And that also picks up the, uh, the slot in the glass scale. So it's very robust. It's uh, very, very solid. So very happy with how that's come up. All right, let's hook up the DRO to it and just make sure we get a readout on it. I've still got to adjust or, or gap that, um, that, that read head on there. And get that set up as well. I'm going to leave it the way it is. It's up hard against the casting there at the moment. I'm fairly happy with that position actually. So um, I'll transfer punch through and uh, we'll get that fitted into place a little bit later on. But um, let's just set up the DRO and just make sure that uh, the reed head's working. I was just going to move the reed head backwards and forwards. Yep, there we go. So no issues with that. I've still got to take off the uh, plastic stop protectors or end stop protectors on this reed head as well. And then uh, just adjust the gap up to the scale a little bit more. But no, not really happy with that. That's worked out really, really well. I got my son to come out and help me when I did the um, the freehand drilling and tapping into the uh, into the saddle here on either side, and that uh, it worked out absolutely spot on. One thing I did find the drawing state that the whole center is at 410, but they actually measured up at 411. So it's important to measure the gear um, before you go and start drilling holes, because um, you might find some little discrepancies between what. Uh, information they're telling you and uh, and what it actually is but that's uh, that's done as I said we'll get the reed head uh, fastened into place and then we'll move on to the um, onto the z-axis okay I'm gonna make up a couple of transfer punches for this reed head so that uh, I can get uh, the holes in the correct position drilled and tapped to mount the reed head onto the uh, under the saddle um, I'm just going to use an M5 socket at a cap screw Just in the battery drill. All right, we've got that in place. I'm just going to give these a very light tap. Like so. And it's only a very light tap, we don't want to damage anything here. Um, these are reasonably robust, I've found in the past, and they do take a bit of a, a bit of knocking, but uh, obviously you just want to take some care. I have biased the reed head slightly this way, so I've got a little bit more flex in the cable when I come up and out. So, a little bit biased that way. Alright, let's get this whole thing apart. We'll show you how this looked in the end, and we'll get some holes drilled and tap ready to, uh, to mount that reed head in place. All right. Which way? Down a bit. Oh, that? Yeah. Okay. Good.
All right, guys, I've just got this set up just to check the scale and make sure we've got no high risk is happening on the scale where it's uh, multiplying out as we go and uh, we're getting one to one as we travel. So I've got that set on zero at the moment. I have run this backwards and forwards a couple of dozen times, uh, almost full stroke, and I do come back to zero every time. But we'll travel one inch because it is a one inch indicator they've got on here. And it should come back to, well, it's going to be fairly hard to see on the screen. Five point four. Let me have a look. Excuse my head. And that's bang on zero again. So we'll run it well beyond, and we'll come back again to zero. Oops. And it's bang on again. So as I said, I've, I've run this backwards and forwards a couple of dozen times now, and each time we do end up bang on zero. And we're back to zero again. So very, very happy with uh, with how that's reading now. Um, I did have a bit of an issue in that uh, I didn't have the cable screwed into the uh, into the nine pin connector properly. And as I was running it backwards and forwards, I was coming out a millimetre one way, two millimetres the other way, and um, it's obviously the plug's just slightly coming out of the pin sets there. So, a um, bit of a worry, but uh, once I screwed it all in and bedded at home, it was uh, it was fine. So, um, yeah, no, very happy with that, guys. All right, let's strip this down, and uh, we'll get the uh, those safety tabs off the side of the reed head, and we'll get the thing mounted up properly. And uh, while we do have it stripped down, I'll, I'll show you how... Uh, how all the machine came up. All right guys, well, that's how it's come up out of that uh, 30 by 30 bit of square tube that we used. You can see the cutout in there that the uh, glass slide fits up inside. You can see our holes through for our mounting points. And you can see how I've left a little bit of a stiffening um, web in there. Not that it needs it really, it's quite stiff as it is. And uh, to fill the holes in, um, I've just got these little, little rubber grommets we'll, we'll press in there and uh, that'll cover the hole up quite nicely. Now I'm going to make up some buttons for the end here, or some caps, so I was hoping I had some Daryl in there, but uh, or some plastic, but I've got nothing, so I'm just going to machine it down out a bit of um, aluminium stock for, uh, for each end, just to finish it off quite nicely. Doesn't really need it, but as I said, it just finishes it off quite nicely and makes the job look right. All right guys, so let's get started on our little end caps. All right, guys, I've machined up two of these uh, these discs to act as end covers. Just machined them up out of a bit of 50 mil scrap that I had lying around. Um, didn't worry about showing the turning on this. It's uh, it's fairly straightforward. Um, these are the end covers that are going to fit into the square hollow section like so. So there's a couple of ways I can machine the flats on these. I could actually glue them into place as a finished item and then just mill them uh, using this as a, a gauge. Or I could put the spigot that I've machined there into an AR collet into a um, square Stevenson's block and uh, and do them that way. So I'll have a bit of a think about which one will go with that. But uh, yeah, fairly quick. May end up doing the Stevenson's block as I can. Machine them all, turn them afterwards. Nah, have a think about it. All right, guys. So what I've done is I've machined this disc to two mil thick on both ends. Pressed it in, glued it into place with some super glue, and now we're just going to create the squares, just coming down to the uh, to the face of the tube, and then we can just clean it off with a file. All right, let's get it going. Alright guys, it's the first one cut. I know where I'm going to go for depth now. I've got that uh, zeroed in on the digi. So uh, I'll just work these around and uh, we'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's uh, when we finish machining. 
All right, guys, that's finished off really, really nice. So I've put a bit of an arras around that and just taken the edges off so I don't cut myself or crack my knuckles on it. I'd rather have my skin than aesthetics. All right, so uh, let's get everything mounted up now. Uh, finally, I'll lock it into place. All right, guys, that's it all finished off and mounted. So that's the x-axis complete. Um, I'll put these little rubber grommets in here just to uh, hide the access holes for the socket head cap screws that mounted up. Um, the ends came up really, really nice. I'm happy with that. And it looks like it's meant to be there. I've set the DRO up in this and uh, powered it up and give it a run and uh, yeah, it works really, really well. All right, the next job is the uh, Z-axis, which we've got to mount up onto here. So I've got some material down here, a bit of angle that we're going to use. And I've got some flat as well, so we'll get that one done next. That should be a little bit easier than this one. This one was fairly fiddly, and I must admit, this is the very first time I've set up a uh, set of glass scales and, and um, reed head without having to do any sort of shimming or packing. Uh, it's, uh, it's gone off really well. I'm really happy with that. All right, we'll see you soon.